Facebook and there's Facebook. Hello everybody. It's Prophet David Taylor uh, here on Sunday, January 12th, 2.30 p.m., my regular uh, uh, prophetic time. So glad to be with you as always. Wait, one more thing I got to start. I'm always recording on so many different levels sometimes. I don't remember to get them all going. Okay, now good. So we got them all going. So thank you for checking me out live. Welcome. Thank you to everybody that's looking at the replay on Facebook Live or Periscope or on my Twitter stream or on YouTube. Thank you so much and God bless you. I appreciate uh, your support and you know I appreciate the opportunity to be used by God and bring a prophetic word. And remember my tagline, God already told you what was going to happen if you had just listened to his servants, the prophets. One more time, God already told you what was going to happen if you had just listened to his servants, the prophets. Okay? All right, let's say a word of prayer and we're going to jump right in. <clears throat> Lord, I thank you for learning how to be in the center of your perfect will. I thank you, Lord, for teaching and training on how to follow you and how to obey and how to bring every area of our lives under your authority. I thank you, Lord, that there is no conflict between your love and your authority, that anything that you say to us is in our best interest, and it's actually the best version of us that you are calling us to. So I thank you for the image of God that you made us in and that you're calling us back to. And I ask your God right now to fill me with the Holy Ghost, to breathe through me, forgive me for any sin, hindrance, unbelief. Lord, any thought, word, or deed, wash me clean. And breathe through me, oh God. Breathe through my mouth, my hands, my eyes, my lips, my tongue, every part of me, oh God, so that the words you want spoken will be spoken. And that your word will go forth to glorify you and to edify the saints, to help us get to where you want us to be, and to tear down the kingdom of darkness, to roar against the giants, to roar against your enemies and our enemies, O oh God, to let them know that they are no match for our God, and that you will establish your kingdom and you will reign and rule, both in time and eternity, both in life and death, both in the now and in the time to come. And we thank you for it. We believe you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Amen and amen. All right. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do today is, you know, every week I come out and I ask the Holy Spirit, what is it that he wants me to say? Because if the Holy Ghost ain't saying nothing, I'm not saying nothing. So what I'm going to do this week is I'm going to release the prophetic word first, and then we're going to look at the scriptures. Okay? Here's a prophetic word of the Lord for today. <clears throat> for thus saith the Lord, for behold, my people, the more that you are looking for is not only more of me, it's also more of you, the real you. So many of you for decades have put up a facade. You've put up a fake self. But I'm not interested in the you you had to pretend to be to survive. I'm not interested in the you that you formed for mama and them. I'm not interested in the, the, what you want people to think you are. But I'm interested in the real you. And like the shattering of a teacup, I'm going to shatter the facade. I'm going to shatter your false self so that the real you can rise to the top. Therefore, my people, I release unto you. A spirit of reconnection, where you can reconnect with that dream, where you can reconnect with what's going on deep on the inside of you, because I'm the one that knit you together in your mother's womb. I'm the one that created your body, your soul, your personality, your mind, and breathed the breath of life inside of you. I'm the one that structured you and put you together, and I'm calling you, I'm speaking to that part of you, that dream. When I was a little boy, I wanted to do what? When I was a little girl, I wanted to do what? When I was a child, I wanted to do what? That's the part of you that I'm talking to. That's the part of you that I'm going to bless, that I'm going to bless because that is where I am. Says the spirit of the living God. Amen and amen. So, uh, let's look at our scripture reference. So we can understand what the Lord just said to us. Now, when you come on 
to the video, please like and share, because whenever God is releasing a prophetic word, it needs to go worldwide. As many people as possible need to hear it. And remember, I'm on, I'm simultaneously on Facebook Live, Periscope, and my Twitter, all at the same time, and then the replay, Facebook Live, Periscope, Twitter, and YouTube, okay? All right, our scripture reference for today is going to be Psalm 139. Psalm 139. Okay, now Psalms is right in the middle of the Bible. Psalms is one of the biggest books in the Bible. It's not the biggest. Isaiah and Jeremiah are a little bit bigger. But Psalm is one of the top five biggest books in the Bible. And so much of it is music. Not all of it, but so much of it is music. So it's right in the center of your Bible. Okay? And uh, many of the Psalms were set to music when they were written. That's why they have the structure that they do. Okay, and that's a little bit more evident in Hebrew when you see it in Hebrew, okay? So we're going to look at Psalm 139. I'm going to read it both out of the New King James Version, and I'm going to read it out of the New Living Translation, okay? All right. <clears throat> Psalm 139, we're going to read verses 13 through 18, okay? Here we go. For you formed my inward parts, you meaning God. For you formed my inward parts. You covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, and that my soul knows very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret, and skillfully wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Your eyes saw my substance being yet unformed, and in your book they were all were written, the days fashioned for me, when as yet there were none of them. How precious also are your thoughts to me, O God! How great is the sum of them! If I should count them, there would be more in number than the sand. When I awake, I am still with you. Let's read that same passage, Psalm 139, 13 through 18, out of the New Living Translation. <clears throat> you made, talking about God, you made all the delicate inner parts of my body and knit me together in my mother's womb. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous, how well I know it. You watched me as I was being formed in utter seclusion, as I was woven together in the dark of the womb. You saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. How precious, how precious are your thoughts about me, O oh God. They cannot be numbered. I can't even count them. They outnumber the grains of sand. And when I wake up, you are still with me. Wow. Just wow. Okay? So if you heard the prophetic word at the top of the broadcast, that was our scripture reference. So what does that have to do? Now remember, there's a difference between exegetic teaching and prophetic exegetic teaching. What do I mean by that? What I mean is, it's one thing to exegete a scripture to get behind the language, to understand, understand what the words mean and what the Bible's saying, and it's another thing altogether for the Holy Spirit to be saying something to you in the moment for that season. That's prophetic exegetic teaching and preaching. So in other words, we get behind the language to understand what the Word is saying, so that we can hear what the Spirit is saying to us and to me in this time and this season. You understand? So if you heard the prophetic word, you heard that the Lord is tearing down our false selves. He's going to shatter like a teacup uh, our facades, the, the people that we have built up ourselves to be, who we want to be in front of others, who we want people to think that we are. That God is tearing that down so that he can help us reconnect with who we really are. So that's why the title of this message is More of Me and You. Because a whole lot of people keep asking God for more. But what you don't understand is that God does not just want to give you more of him. God wants to give you more of you. And the real you is way down here in your sub-basement, way down here in your dreams, and what made you really tick. Like when you were little, everybody when they're little, they, loves with an open, they love with an open heart. 
you love your parents with all that you have because when you're a child, that's the only way you know how to love. When you first fall in love with your first love, do you know how you love? You love unreservedly. When you first fall in love, you do not hold any part of yourself back. And you know what happens as we go through life? We get hurt. We take blows. We're, we're in the war between good and evil. We're in the struggle between the spirit and the flesh. And that definitely inflicts damage. It inflicts damage on your soul. But God is saying he wants to heal. He wants to shatter your walls. He wants to, to, to heal all of your scars so that you can reconnect with the real you. Because he said in the scripture that he made all the delicate inner parts of our body because our bodies are delicate. And the different parts of our body, they're delicate. Knit us together in our mother's womb and he makes us complex. We're complex beings. Some people have reduced themselves down to one or two traits. Have you ever noticed that? When you meet some people, it's like they just got like two moods. <laughs> and that's all there is to them. And so sometimes people think if they've seen your one or two moods, they think they've seen everything about you that there is to see. And that's not the truth. Because the Bible says we are wonderfully complex. And the fact that the Bible says that we are wonderfully complex means that we can't be listening to the devil and wicked people. Because you know what the devil does? And do you know what wicked people do? They're always trying to tear you down. They will always focus on your faults and your flaws, the cracks in your cup, as you will, if you will. But that's not the, what the scripture says. The scripture says that the complexity of being a human being is wonderful. It's all purpose from God. Okay? That means you are supposed to walk in every part of the wonderful complexity that God made to be when he made you. And some of you looking at me right now, you are suppressing parts of yourself. Some of you are afraid to love. Some of you love kind of half-heartedly. Some of you have things inside of you like books or plays or buildings or, or poetry or some of you have sports inside of you. Some of you have business ideas that the world has literally never seen before and you're suppressing it because you're so afraid of what they are going to think about me. You're so afraid, well, you know, normally women don't do that or normally black people don't do that or normally people my age, whatever age you are, you know, somebody might say, well, you're too young to do all that. You're too young and all that. Somebody say, you're too old. You miss your window. You are suppressing the, the wonderful complexity that God has put inside you. Verse 14, your workmanship is marvelous how well I know it. That's two, two words that God uses to describe us. He says you are wonderfully complex and his workmanship is marvelous. And God said, I made you to be that way. So do you know what the problem is? The problem is, in, in many cases, is low self-esteem. I've discovered that a lot of people in their pursuit of the spiritual, they don't understand that all of life is integrate, integrated. Your spirit is the thing that's holding up your body and your soul. Because you're integrated, you're not a separate being. And whatever affects your spirit, it also affects your mind and your emotions. Did you know that? And when you have low self-esteem, you're not in agreement with God. And that's probably because you didn't grow up or you've never been around anybody that spoke to how wonderful you are and spoke to how marvelous you are, because that's the workmanship of God. That's the complexity of God that he made when he made you. And so all of those dreams, because when you're a child, you don't have a filter. Whatever it is you really feel when you're a child, if it comes up, it's coming out. I want you to think back. What did you spend hours and hours and hours doing when you were a kid? What was it that you loved to do so much that mom and daddy had to make you stop doing it and go to bed? What was it that you did that made you give up your TV time, made you give up time with your friends, that made you just not worry about the clock because you were so, you were so in love with what you were doing? What was that? I stopped by to ask you, are you doing that for a living? Are you living that dream? Are you still that person? What if you fell in love with the Bible at four years old? Do you still love the word of God now like you did then or, or love it even more? What if you were doing gymnastics at four years old? Did you ever pursue a gymnastics career? And please get rid of that all or nothing mentality. You don't have to be Simone Biles 
to have a career in gymnastics. Now, I love Simone, and Simone deserves every one of her propers because she's the best in history. She's earned all that she has. That's not what I mean because I love her, and I greatly respect her. That's not what I mean. What I mean is we tend to have this all-or-nothing mentality where we tend to say to ourselves, if I'm not that, then I'm not anything. If I can't do it on that level, then forget it. And then you just throw the whole dream away because you're so busy obsessing on all or nothing. So what did you do? Did you love to race your bike? Did you love to race cars? What did you do when you were a kid that just took up hours and hours and hours and hours of your time and you didn't care because you're so caught up, so engrossed, so in love with what you were doing? And see, uh, this morning in service, when the Lord gave me that prophetic word, he said that because we've been seeking him for more, but the more that we're seeking is not just more of him, it's more of you. And so God wants to be sure that anything that's in the way of that wonderful person that he made you to be is cleared out and shattered. You watched me as I was being formed in utter seclusion as I was woven together in the dark of the womb. So while you were growing as a baby inside your mom, nobody saw you but the Lord because he was the one knitting you together. That means he's the only one that has the original blueprint. Nobody knows exactly who you're supposed to be and nobody knows exactly what's in you except the Lord. Okay, and he's the only one that can reveal it to you in the fullness. You saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. Okay, now I don't know if you know this or not, but when your mother is pregnant with you, God has a book of your life with your name on the cover. It's your book. On one side of the ledger, God has all the things that he wants to give you, all the things he wants you to become, all the things he wants you to do in your life. On the other side are blank pages. So as you live every day of your life, God records what you say and do with your life and then compares it to what he wanted. And then God judges you, blesses you, rewards you, chastises you accordingly. How close are you to what God wrote down? How close are you to the perfect will of God? Are you in the process of becoming everything he wanted you to become? Are you doing what he wanted you to do? Because remember, uh, one of the prophetic words this morning, while Prophetess Kathy was ministering, she said, God is about to do something in your life that's out the box. Don't you know that God called an older couple to have a baby? That's Abraham and Sarah. Uh, Abraham was 100 and Sarah was 90 when they had Isaac. Don't you know that, that Jesus called his mom to carry him? Most scholars agree that Mary was somewhere between 12 and 14 years old. So we'll split the difference and say that Mary was 13. Don't you understand that God trusted the son to a girl that was in eighth grade? <laughs> what would you do if Gabriel appeared to you and said, you are blessed and highly favored. You're going to carry the Christ child and you're 13 years old. What would you do? What would you do if you were John the Baptist and you had to move away from your parents and go in the wilderness and wear clothes made out of animal skin and eat locusts and wild honey and preach the same message every week repent for the kingdom of heaven as at hand because it was john the baptist's job to call attention to the fact that jesus was on earth because that would they only had a window for the lord to be on earth the lord was only on earth as a man for 33 years and then he was gone and that's never going to happen again so it was the the purpose of john the baptist's life to call the attention of the people in Jerusalem that the Son of God, the Lamb of God, is on earth right now. So it's time for you to repent and be, become a part of his kingdom. Do you see that? So the reason I bring up those examples from the scriptures is to let you know that the reason some of y'all haven't been living your full potential is because it's not going to look normal, whatever that is, or it's not going to look orthodox. It's going to be out of box. It's going to be something that the world has never seen before. It's going to be something that people like you don't normally do, whatever that means. See, those are the words of man. That's why you have to learn how to listen to the Lord. That's people always telling you what you can and cannot do. That's people trying to tell you that at this stage of life, you should be this. You should be doing this. You should feel that way. And many times they do that because that's what they're doing. Don't you know that Colonel Sanders didn't start Kentucky Fried Chicken until he was in his 60s? Don't you know he had that chicken recipe and he knew he had something good. 
Did you know that Colonel Sanders, before they caught on to his recipe, he would walk miles and miles and miles? A man in his 60s now trying to sell that recipe until he got the restaurants of his own started. 60, I think it was 62 years of age. So when the Lord is, says he's going to shatter your facade, your facade, your false self, that means you're going to have to let him do that work and let him let you get back in touch with the real you that lives way down in here, a part that you normally don't let people see. <clears throat> the part of yourself that you keep hidden because you don't want to be hurt. Because when I was little, I knew I wanted to draw, but Mama Nim told me I needed to get a real job. So I've been working as a paralegal, and I'm bored, and I'm angry, and I'm frustrated. Do you know why? Because you weren't called to be a paralegal. Ain't nothing wrong with being a paralegal, but if that's not your call, and you were supposed to draw, that's what you're supposed to do. How am I supposed to do that, Prophet Taylor? You have to start where you are. You have to use what you have, and you have to do what you can. Because once again, <clears throat> just like a child is conceived in a moment when your father releases inside of your mother, and then the egg gets fertilized. From the moment that that egg gets fertilized in your mother's fallopian tube, it travels in the fallopian tube down to the uterus, and the uterus is full of iron-rich blood. And that's the blood that women pass on their cycle when they're not pregnant. That's why women bleed once a month, because the egg did get fertilized, so the uterus filled with blood to prepare to take care of a fertilized egg. But when the uterus senses that the egg is not fertilized, then the uterus releases the blood, and that is a woman's menstrual cycle. That is a woman's period. So when a woman is pregnant, that's why she doesn't bleed, because now all that blood is going to is going to feed that fertilized egg, that baby, and that baby goes from a fertilized egg into a baby. Okay, that process takes the better part of a year, nine months. So why did I bring all that up? I said that to say that so many of you are hesitant to get started on what God is calling you to do because you want the finished product right away. Like if you've been called into full-time ministry, you want what Bishop Jakes has right now. You want what Joel Osteen has right now or whatever big name, whatever you listen to, Marilyn Hickey, uh, Joyce Myers, uh, the Hagans, the Copelands, Jesse Duplantis. Paula White, whoever you listen to that's big time in ministry, you're saying to yourself that if I can't start out at that level, forget it. <laughs> that if I can't do that, then just forget the whole thing. And that is not what God is saying. Just like God takes a fertilized egg and takes the better part of a year to turn it into a baby, and then your mama has to push you out. So it is when God plants things inside of you. When those things are fertilized, they're going to have to grow inside of you, and then you have to push them out, and you have to go into labor. Okay? It works as it works in the natural. It works the same way in the spirit. And that's why so many people just never got started. Well, I did gymnastics when I was young. You know, I tumbled around on the flow, but, you know, I'm not Simone Biles and them. You don't have to be Simone. You don't have to be Allie Raceman. You don't have to be them. Be you. You don't have to be Tiger Woods. Play golf if that's what God called you to do. Okay? You don't have to be at that level. You don't have to be those people. Start where you are. Use what you have. Do what you can because you ain't going to never be them nowhere. Haven't you ever studied people that were at the top of their game at some point? Did you notice that they were all unique? Haven't you know? Even though I know artists borrow a lot from each other, have you noticed that when a musical artist, when they peek out, they tend to carve out their own space? And once they get to a certain point, there's nobody else like them. You see that? Because that's them being them at their max potential. That's what God is telling you, that you've got to start somewhere. And then you've got to develop that which God has given you. So God wants to take away everything that's hindering you from being yourself and get you back in touch with those dreams you had as a child and bring that out here. So not only will you get a blessing, but you'll be a blessing to the world. And that's why God put it in you. Okay, a little bit more and I'll be done. Every day of my life is quoting your book. How precious are your thoughts about me, O oh God? They cannot be numbered. And there it is again. God thinks precious thoughts about you. That means that all that negative stuff is from the devil and from the flesh. Did you know that? 
the Bible says that his thoughts, about how precious are your thoughts about me. When he thinks about me, he thinks precious thoughts. That means all that ugliness comes from the devil, comes from the flesh, and comes from wicked people. That, that means we're not supposed to be entertaining those kinds of thoughts in our heads and our hearts because those are not God's thoughts. They cannot be numbered. God thinks precious thoughts of me, and there's so many of them, I can't count them. They outnumber the grains of sand, and when I wake up, you're still with me. In other words, the Lord doesn't leave me when I'm asleep. You don't go away like people do. He's with me all the time. All right? So I want to encourage you, my brothers and my sisters, to allow God to tear away your false self, to let God shatter like a glass teacup hitting the ground everything about you that's not the real you that's covering up all of your dreams because you're afraid, afraid to live your dreams or afraid of what they going to say or afraid that they going to talk about me or afraid that people aren't going to get you. Let God shatter all of that so that the real you and ideas and ministries and businesses and administrations and art and athletics and things that the world has never seen before can come forward to the glory of God, to the joy of your soul, and to the blessing of mankind. All right? Amen and amen. Now, if you have any prayer requests, please put them on the screen now. Uh, when you see me close my eyes, and uh, what I'm doing is I'm speaking in tongues, I'm asking the Holy Ghost, are there any more prophetic words? Are there any financial words? Is there any deliverance that needs to happen? Any demons need to be cast out? And there is, is there any physical healing that needs to happen? Okay? So that's what I'm doing now. All right, the word and the image that came to me was river. And remember I told you I have an anointing for dream interpretation, so I know what that means, okay? If the image and the word that the Holy Ghost gave me was river, that means many things. One of the things it means is cleansing. Haven't you ever felt how the earth is refreshed after the rain? So if God opens up, uh, the rivers of heaven, he's going to pour cleansing down on you and you will feel good and refreshed. That's going to be part of him uh, uh, washing away. See, that's why he said river and not rain because rain tends to have light drops, but a river is a downpour. A river is a big thing. God's going to wash that false self away from you so you can truly be you again. Also in a river is the life-giving water. It's refreshing. Uh, it combats dehydration. God is going to refresh you, and God is going to liquefy and bring nourishment to and moisture uh, and renewal to the dry places. But a river also means uh, a lot, kind of a gushing, kind of a rushing. So that means when God begins to pour out his blessings, it's going to be a steady stream. It's not going to be a little trickle. It's not going to be a little trickle. It's going to be a rush. Okay, it's going to be a, a huge pour and a huge flow. So what that means is that that it's time for us to start decreeing that. Remember, I told you, I always taught you, you got an HBO. When you got to hear the word of the Lord, you got to read the scripture, you got to hear the prophetic word coming out the mouth of the prophet, you got to believe it, and then you got to obey it. You got an HBO. So that means we have to start expecting and saying, I expect God to give me a river, a river of cleansing, a river of moisture a river to combat my dehydration, a river of refreshing, and a river of blessing. A whole bunch of blessings coming to me at one time. You got to start saying that. Got to confess it. But the Holy Ghost is saying, that's what he's saying today. That means it's available right now in the spirit. So right now, in the name of Jesus, I confess my river. I confess my river of cleansing. And God is going to cleanse me of anything that I'm carrying that's not from him. That's not the man he made me to be. God is going to cleanse me. I confess it right now in Jesus' name. Because remember, I told you I always do when I'm preaching and teaching. Okay? I confess right now in Jesus' name that God is going to give me a river of moisture. That he's going to combat dehydration and give me moisture and nourishment in my life. I confess right now in Jesus' name that God is going to give me an outpour of blessing. A rushing, not little trickles, but a big rushing stream a river of blessing, so that not only will I get a blessing, but I will become 
a blessing. I declare a decree in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the true and living God, the river of God, the cleansing, the moisture, the refreshing from dehydration, and the blessing and the flow. I declare a decree right now in Jesus' name that it's in my life, and it is so. That's how you do it. What, what you just saw me do, that's how the HBO. Hear what the Holy Ghost is saying. Believe what the Holy Ghost is saying and obey by confessing, by saying it and then preparing for it. Begin to look for it in your life. Okay? I remember when my pastor had us confess good things. He said, God is the God of good things. And he had us walk around saying good things. A whole bunch of stuff out happening in my life that was like really good things. Just like, just like strange, inexplainable stuff. Like money out of nowhere, just like that. Because good things started happening because we said it. Because I heard the word from the apostle. I believed that prophetic word. And I obeyed by confessing and expecting it myself. And it happened. You understand? So that's what you need to do. So I'm so excited about that. So like you just saw me do, I'm going to walk in it. Whoever don't walk in it, it's my job to release the word of the Lord and let the chips fall where they may. So if you don't want an HBO, that's on you. I'm going to HBO because I want all that blessing. All right. So I can't tell you how many things I have coming up this year. My prophet, prophetic devotional is here. Uh, I'm still waiting to get the copy so I can show you the copy in my hand. But um, the links are going to be on Facebook and YouTube where you can order a copy of my prophetic devotional where you can study a different scripture about prophecy every day, meditate on it, get revelation from God, write it down like a journal, and then come back and watch how God makes it come to pass and the blessing you get from obedience. It's all that in one book, okay? So that's why I'm super excited about it, my prophetic daily devotional and my music. Okay, I'm not just a prophetic uh, speaker and teacher. I'm a prophetic minstrel and psalmist. I'm a songwriter, and producer, and a musician. So my music, so all that's coming this year too. I'm so excited. I can't tell you how excited I am about the, the musical flow um, because that's something I've done all my life. People that just met me now don't know that I do that. A lot of people that meet me now think I'm just an author. I've been doing music since I was a teen, well, since I was like six or seven, I actually started writing six or seven. I wrote like my first uh, poem, like around six. So I've been doing music, you know, my entire life. So, so much of that is uh, going to come out uh, this year as well. So I am so excited. And I say that to say that, again, I'm living what I'm saying. That I'm not just running my mouth and saying something to you and I'm, and I'm doing something else. I'm living what I'm saying. So I'm so excited about that. And I want to be in the perfect will of God. I want to be in lockstep with God. I don't want to get ahead of him. I don't want to get behind him, and I don't want to turn to the left or the right. I want to do what he wants me to do in sync and in season with him, because that's where the blessing and the flow is. All right? So, a, a man and a man, uh, I got links. So, if you want to donate to my ministry, if you want to support me financially, I got my Zell link, prophetdavidtaylor at gmail.com. I've got my prophetic devotional link. I've got the YouTube and Periscope, Periscope links to this always. And then I've got uh, the link to my main website, prophetdavidtaylor.org. So where you can see everything I have all in one place. Like when I do ministry field work, when I travel, that whole thing, that's all in one place on, on my main website, okay? So I'm so excited about 2020. I hope you're excited about your 2020. I hope you're seeking God and listening to the prophetic words and allowing him to line your life up so you can maximize your life and yourself. So in 2020, we don't just get more of him because that's a whole lot of people, religious people problem. They keep saying, I want more Jesus. That's true, but you need more of you too. You need more of him and you need more of you, the real you. And that's what I'm looking forward to walking in. All right? Amen, amen. God bless. Uh, don't forget to check out my No More Genies broadcast. That was Thursday night. Last Thursday was the second Thursday of the month. I broadcast every second Thursday. Uh, and I did the parable of the net uh, last Thursday. So that's on this page. All my places has that No More Genies broadcast. And remember, if you go to my website and you sign up to be on my email list, you can get an alert. I do not spam because I hate spam. I got so much stuff in my inbox now. I'm trying to keep up, keep up. So I don't give you spam, but I give you an alert so that whenever I drop new content, you can be alerted. So go to my website, prophetdavidtaylor.org, or you can click on the button right on top of the Facebook page. So if you're watching me on Facebook Live, there's a button right at the top that says sign up. You can get on my email list there so you can know when new content drops. Okay? Thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Have a blessed week. 
I will see you same time, 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time next Sunday. And remember that it's time to get more of Christ and more of us too, the real you. Amen and amen. God bless.